All right, hi everybody. We do have about six members now, and more might show up. Um, thought it would be a nice little change of pace to occasionally have some other members kind of lead the way into showing what type of strategies they look at, if um, just helping out others and entering trades, um, any general questions that other members have. So it might be a good learning lesson doing it this way uh, when I'm teaching chemistry. Like sometimes I'll have my students teach a concept to other students and that helps them learn the material as well too. So if you guys are pretty confident, Jimmy's been a member for years now, it was almost two years. So, you know, it's good to be able to lead the way when you need to and, and you'll learn it more as well. So everyone benefits, right? Yeah. All right, so I'll man the helm here. And if I say anything that's like obviously wrong, I'm definitely going to pitch in at that point, but I'm pretty sure you're going to be great on it. So, all right, the floor is yours. All right. Well, again, like you said, um, I've been with Lance a couple of years now. i uh, got in trading for about, I guess, three years. Um, I guess background on that is I started in, didn't really know much, and jumped right in way too fast. And um, didn't really have strategy and just account just blew it up so got in with lance he showed me strategy how to learn and uh kind of picked up some things here and there and um as, as lance shows every day you know he's got multiple trades to do um one trade i want to talk about tonight is the put credit spread i know there's the, the zero dte and the put credit spread are kind of for the beginners um love the credit spread doesn't take much buying power and you get good percentages from it and go way out of the money so things that I look for, I try and find, after talking to a good friend, you know, some boring stocks, I guess, or slow stocks. Um, but tonight I'm going to show you just how to use like SPY. So on the put credit spread, I know just looking through the, the channel, some people have had some issues trying to set it up. So a way you can look for a trade or what I like to do, you know, use the Delta. You know, when Lance usually goes for about that 10 delta. So in theory, that means you have about a 90% chance of that winning. And then actually, if you close it out early, it actually makes your percentage a little higher. So uh, something I like to do, I know I don't know if many of you heard about support resistance. You know, he, if you ever look at charts, support's kind of the bottom line, if you can see my screen here. So three month average is pretty good to go off. So if you look here, it's obviously market's been nuts lately so it's kind of hard to find a steady three month line but if we use this for right now you can see here you know 475 that's a good support there you can go a little higher here you know 487 you see wherever the wherever it touches multiple times that's what you would call the support so for me right now i'm doing the credit spreads in my roth so there's you know i don't have to worry about you know capital gains i just i can make as much as i want from the spreads there but also in that going with that i'm trying to be a little safer so really i'm kind of looking for the seven to ten delta the further away i can go i'm fine i'm going to almost let these expire worthless because i'm going further away but i'm still going to follow the 3x stop now with the 3x stop um if you don't know that say you take in say you take in 20 premium so if you're watching and the stock's starting to tank, when it gets to 60, that's 20 times three, that's when you stop out. So that would be, you'd lose $40 because you had 20, you gained already. So you only lose $40. And that's how, this, that's how the, the 3X credit spread strategy works. That, help, that helps keep the percentages right and the, the gains right. So I don't have think or swim. So I'm going to show you on um, Tasty here. So trade I did today, also what I'm doing, me personally, I'm doing weekly. I'm doing 30 days, but say, for example, so Monday through Friday this week, I'm going to do 30 days expiration. So I'm going for the 328 mark. So what I did today, I went 328. So you would go here, and you also you see your delta. And obviously some stocks are different. That's where the volatility comes in. So some are always going to be about the same, like NVIDIA, you know, Tesla, um, those high-tech stocks, they're all going to have a little more volatility, more premium. 
but also there's more risk because they can go up real quick and down. So SPY is pretty safe to start. So what I would look for here, I think I did the 475 mark. So to put a trade on for a credit spread, this is a nine delta. So that's meaning technically you have 91% chance of the stock staying above 475 by March 28th. So to do the credit spread, you would do the bid, which is the sell, you do that first. So you click that and then you do the 470 on the ask, which is the buy. So that's a five wide. So that means you'd use 500 buying power. And this is saying you take in 18 credit. So that's a little lower than Lance normally does. But again, what I would do, I'm looking for three, 3% 3 a week or 3% a month, 2%. So if I let that expire worthless, you know, that's a little over 3%. You could even go, like I said, a little higher and get the 20 and then close at 10. And there's your 2%. Do it that way. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. This is kind of what I've been doing, though. So you take that and that, again, going by that, what I'm coming with that percentage is, so make it easy. So say it was 15, 15 divided by 500, you know, that's where you get 3, 3%. And actually, it's a little more because you take, because you're receiving 15. So it'd really be 15 divided by 485. I'm not good enough in math to figure out that number, but just for easy math for you, that's right. how you can look at that number. Yeah, so you this, just take the you take the 500 and subtract the 15 premium. You got it right. Yeah. Okay. So whatever that percentage is, that's what you would gain up front. And then obviously, if you let expire worthless after March 28, you would get your 485 buying power back, and you had your 15 premium right away, and you're done. Um, also, like I said, like Lance does it, which is another good way, which I do some also, you collect a little more, close early, and then you still get your percentage gain in a certain amount of time. So that's how that works, just setting up the spread. And I've kind of been doing it just because the market's been so high lately. You don't really know what to expect. I'm kind of sticking with the ETFs right now. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a SPY, IWM, and QQQ one of those each week, kind of the same strategy as the low delta for futures we do. And so far, knock on wood, has been good. Obviously, you pick anything right now, it'd be good. But that's how you set that up. Right. So as you can quick see question, there. Quick question. Um, do you do all those staggered, like the IWM one week, SPY the next week, and so on? Or do you pretty much do them all at the same time? I'm basically doing... Um, I'm doing all three each week. So I'm kind of just looking. I'm going to try and see if one of them's having a down day, even if it's a minimal. I'm just going to take that one. Uh, no real strategy to that. Just Monday through Friday, I'm going to try and do one of each of those three. And then for the other two days, that's where I take one of your trades, or I'll just look for a slow one, or like a, like a, I'll do a Clorox, um, you know, Texas instrument, um, cat, things like that. Just kind of slow moving ones. Actually, those take in pretty good premium too. So that's kind of how I fill in the rest of my week for that. But those are my three steady that I'm going to let those expire worthless if possible. The two individual stocks that I do, that's where I'm going to keep a little bit closer eye on and close early. So that's the credit spread. And that's kind of the strategy I've been doing with that. Let's see if I can get out of here for you. You can just click clear trade on the top right. Can you see it out? There we go. Good to see my whole screen. Okay, but say if you want to do, I like to use Robinhood just because it's easier for me to see the lines. So say you want to take a stock. There's another one you can look at. One second. It's like Caterpillar. Also, another thing when you get with the individual stocks, I've learned the hard way, as a couple of people on here know, is you got to watch for earnings. Those can, depending on the stock, depending on the timing, those can get a little wacky. So you look here first, what I would do on the individual stock, I would look for the earnings. 
And so April 25th, I'm showing be the next one. So I think I'm safe to do within the 30 days. So when you look at 30, you know, it's all about shopping around. So I'll sit here and shop around and look. So, you know, it doesn't move as much, but you can see here, you know, a lot of support around 290, 288, kind of in that range. So if you get anywhere around that, it'd be good. But again, you got to take in the amount you're happy with. You know, so we'll go back over here. A little easier for you, because I know I think a lot of you use uh, Thinkorswim. So let's go with this. And we'll go to 328. And you look at the deltas. See the delta, sometimes with the slower moving stocks, the deltas are going to be closer to the strike or closer to the, at the money, just because they don't move as much. Like Pepsi is a big one that you can only be 10 points away, you know, and you're, you know, you're going to be pretty close. One that I did recently I liked was Costco because it's such a higher stock, higher price stock. You can go further away from it and it doesn't move as much. Um, I did actually an iron condor on that recently and got away with that. So say here, what was it, about 290? So yeah, there's, let's see what we can get here, 290. Remember we click the sell, the bid is sell, and then the buy, the ask. So there's your five wide. See, for the individual stock, that's probably a little low. It's only 16. So we can go back. And that's why you still be about the 10 delta. I wouldn't want to go any higher than that. We'll see what that looks like. See, there you'd be getting 38. So on that one, that might be a little too much for me to take right away. But if you did that, you're still in a safe spot. As you can see here where it says... Uh, the POP, that's kind of the percentage of saying of you being right and winning, still 98%. So it's still not a, a bad trade. If you do that, it's close to the support we had, and you're taking 38, which is actually 7%. So you can definitely could close that early. You close that 20, close it at 20, taking 18, you're still 3% there. So that's how I would look at that one. Again, mm -hmm. looking back here, so what is this, 2 295. Yeah, remember when you're looking in the middle of the night, these premiums are a bit different because right. yeah. the options aren't open right now. So. Good point there. They do change. But again, if you were to take that, if everything stayed the same, you know, 295 is kind of right around that support. So you can even do the math, figure it out. I also like to do, I just don't have my calculator. You can take 295 divided by 325 and whatever that difference is, that's how much percentage you have, you know, for it to drop and you're still safe. So you see yeah. you 300 is pretty safe, you know, 299. So it looks like it'd be a fairly good trade, fairly good trade. And if it starts dipping, again, that's where you follow the 3X. So you do 40, you just round up to 40 times three. If it gets to 120, close out. Just as, you know, you want to keep it pretty mechanical. Only time you wouldn't want, you might want to, sounds bad you don't want to roll the dice maybe just kind of keep a closer eye on it if it shoots up right away and you're still way away from your strike maybe just keep an eye on it put a close tab that's up to you you know i like to follow the 3x recently because i've been burning so much in the past because not knowing what to do so that's how i follow that it all makes sense do you, do you like looking at more of the blue chip type stocks for these like caterpillar pepsi stuff like that i do know that i'm doing the roth yes just because, again, they don't move as much. I'm trying to kind of keep this slow and steady because it's just in the Roth. I can't touch the money anyway. So I might as well let it, you know, keep rolling it or keep moving and let the fatal work to get more premium collected. I'll do a couple here and there. Like I said, I did the NVIDIA. I closed out early just because I was scared. But um, really, I try and do the blue chip, stay that way. You know, I did Disney. I do Clorox, Cat, Texan. Um, I'm liking the Costco. I'm going to look at it again after the earnings. But I've also experimented trying to do the iron condors on those, which is even um, kind of maybe goes a little way from the theta strategy. But I'll go even further out of the money and collect just 12 premium on both sides and just let it expire worthless. 
So you still get 4% and just let it be, you know, it's kind of tough. The only tough part when you get that lower premium, we collect 10 up front or 12 is you can't really close early because commissions will get you and you're not really getting a whole 2%. So with those, you got to find something that's going to just kind of stay steady for a while. But I've done, a, I've done one of those and that worked out, but these are kind of the individual stocks I'm looking at. You know, Apple is pretty good one because it's, you know, it's basically running the SP 500 right now too. So it doesn't move a lot and you can get some good premiums, but you, you can get some silly ones. Let's see. Um, this one I saw the other day. I've got a list over here where I had some high premium plays before when I was doing non-blue chip. And the best thing to do is just, if you get bored at night, just look around. You know, if I'm laying around, I'm just going to look. Yeah. So these are my lists of the normal ones to keep an eye on. But at one time I made, there it is. So these are some high premium ones. Like coin, that's going to have some high premium. DoorDash did, Baba. Let's see. Tesla for sure. Let's see. We can look at Tesla real quick. Sorry, my computer's slow. This is a similar methodology that I do when I'm looking for the daily trades, too. I have a watch list of about 50 stocks, and then I do look at recent support as one of the main factors. So especially if I can sell below the recent support and still get good premium out of it, but usually ends up being an alert. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, I know you said you do that. I know you use TradingView too. I do also, but just not as much, like using the RSI when you show the really oversold. Um, to be honest, I just don't do it. I just kind of go like this, kind of shop around that way. Like Tesla, you know, it's down 180. You know, another good thing, I heard this in another channel, which I didn't really click at first. If you're if you're hesitant about a trade, don't let it keep you up all night. If you want to close close to break even just to get out or or less than your actual target, just get out. There's always going to be more options, more trades. So you might you want to do whatever you can just to save your buying power. You're basically just putting it in, taking it out when you can. So if it's not one that works out, oh well, you can do it again down the road if that makes sense to people. Yep, sounds good. We have about 10 minutes left, so let's leave it open for questions. Okay. Um, Matt wrote, um, do you look at trends, like trends in the recent stock price? Um, but looking at the trends, I guess that would be kind of looking at the three month. Um, this is all I look at if you're looking at the screen, Matt. Or was You said it was Matt? Yeah. Yeah. So the only trends I'm looking at is just that how many times it hits that bottom spot. So, like, so right here, the only trend I would look at is it's hitting 184. 187. So I'm going to look for a trade around 180, 185. Um, I don't, like I said, I use TradingView every now and then. When I was doing the zero DTE, I used it more. Um, but really, I just kind of look at the support lines on the graph right here. Hope that answers the question. Yep. Sounds good. Um, we'll leave it open for questions. Anyone that could unmute your mic and just free questions as you have. Could ask me or Jenny. I could leave some questions to you then. Um, yeah, you pretty much summarized very well, exactly. That's similar to what I do as well. Um, have you considered looking at other technical indicators besides? Just looking at the stock price. Because the main ones I look at are RSI, if it's increasing. Um, I'll look at EMAs and moving averages to see if those are increasing as well. Because then it's more of a bullish setup. So most of the time, I usually look for those type of trades. But occasionally, like Tesla dropped quite a bit in the last three months. So mm -hmm. I, I don't mind playing the contrarian play there and trying to guess where the bottom might be or close to a bottom and then sell even further down. And then just hope that it just stays where it is. But I typically don't do those as much. Is there any type of things that you look at like that? Yeah, the, the only one I use is the RSI. So if it's, you know, because that kind of shows the trend where it's going. Uh, yeah. The EMA, I, I just don't know that one very well. I know you use that a lot when you post it. But the RSI is kind of the one I will go to with that. Um, yeah, I'll use the VWAP, or the 
just kind of see the bars there. But again, I that's kind of to me that's more for the single zero DTE. But for the trends, you know, the RSI is kind of the best for me. Fair enough. I'm trying not to ask all the questions. So if others have any, feel free to ask. If you want, I can go over Z zero DTE real quick. Sure. Well, some questions pop in. So I know some people, a lot of people like to do those. For me, not as much anymore because I'm just too busy at work. Um, I would click on the one DTE for tonight. Just yeah, so that's what I'm looking at. So when I was doing this, I had a pretty good streak last May and June when I was doing it. Um, I would look at Lance's because he's looking, you know, he's using the, you know, the futures showing the night before and kind of picking that trend. Um, I'm just kind of looking at Delta and look how far away I can get because it's only one day. You know, if you mess up, you know, if you get less than you want, it's okay. You can do it again the next day. So I would even look for the four Delta far away as I can get. And so you want to go 10 wide, you'd sell the first one and buy the second one. And again, that right there, 98% chance to get 2% because it's all out of a thousand buying power. So that's how that would work. If that makes sense to everyone. And you know, you can close that early, close it half, and that's one percent for the day. Because that's kind of the goal. That's the goal I used to. Everything I did on zero DTE was just what Lance does. I did nothing different. I just maybe go a little further out. Cause I would try to let mine expire worthless because I don't have I didn't have the account big enough to uh, do more than three a week. Yeah, that makes sense. So even here you can go, you know, three delta. As you can see there, that, that collects one and a half percent if it expires, or close a little over one percent. But that's whole another topic. When, we're talking when about I do the math, stuff. when I do the math on these, like once you do them long enough, you'll realize if you do a just a put credit spread, it's five dollars pretty much. If you do the iron condor, it's ten because you have to do both legs. Is that again? So if you do like a put credit spread, it'll be five dollars in commissions pretty much. And if oh. you do a iron condor, just double it for ten dollars. So I usually subtract that out when I'm trying to figure out the returns anyway. Okay. Yeah. I got, a really, few more, got a few more minutes left. If anyone else has any other questions, it's be a good time. Yeah, I would say the credit spreads are they're as easy to start out as they can be. You know, yeah. pretty simple setup, good premiums. I said, I don't know if anyone uses Robinhood. That's where I started using. I just keep it open. It's just a little easier to set up. So you go 31 days. You just pick your strikes. Pick one looks good. Sell the top one. Buy the bottom one. See what you get and go from there. Yep. Like that'd be only 1%. Wouldn't take it. But either way, you see the, the concept. Yep. All right, good, good job, good overview, and learning this stuff. You're definitely a good student of data traders and able to understand a lot of these concepts very well. I love hearing your ideas. You DM me like, hey, look at this stock and look at this spread, and what do you think, and then give my opinion. So any other members that are watching, feel free to do that whenever you'd like. You can also do it on the um, member trade channel if you actually take a trade. That's not one of mine, just to keep it more open communication for others to like consider different positions too, because there's plenty out there, you know, don't, don't feel bad that you miss one. I'm like, I can't do anything about it. There's plenty of opportunities out there. Um, I've been using a fairly standard, um, like a Bollinger band watch list at times. Yeah, and you then, that. yeah if, I, if I see a lot of positions that are um, pretty much near the top of the Bollinger band, but not quite there yet, it's usually going to have bullish momentum anyway. And then at that point, you can just easily, so we'll put credit spread against it. So. Yeah. The biggest thing I'm doing, I'm just, it may be too simple. I just try to keep it as simple as possible. I look at the Delta, make sure I can get the premium happy with and right. let it ride. Sounds good. And so, if anyone so. has any questions, they can reach out to me. You know, I'm no genius, but I can at least answer the simple questions for you. Yep. And help it go. You want to share your Discord name? You what? Do you want to share your Discord name? Oh, yeah. I think, was it Yimmy? Yimmy28? 
Yeah, Yummy 328. You, you post pretty regularly there. Yeah. Hi, Don. You came came in a little late. We're about to finish, but we do these pretty regularly. And um, that's fine. And, and I, I think it's it turns good... out I haven't used Zoom in forever. Uh, I had a download. All right. Sounds great. Um, we're gonna do this more regularly. This is actually the first one that we actually had someone else host the Zoom. I'm just here to moderate and ask questions as we have it. So if anytime down the line, if you ever want to do that, feel free. You you can hide your camera too if you'd like. <laughs> Either way is fine with us. So yeah, we're gonna all right. Uh, all right. So we're we're gonna end the session now because I actually have another one-on-one -on -one Zoom in a few minutes. So again, if you want to ask Yumi any questions, Yumi, what was the number? Three, two, four. I don't know. Here's, here's my baseball number, 28. Give me Maybe 20. 20. There you go. Yep. So, yeah, feel free to ask any questions. Anyone else on the meeting, if you ever want to host one of these, like, don't feel too shy about it. You know, we're all trying to learn anyway. And this is a good way to learn exactly how you're doing your strategies or how you follow mine and maybe suit it to your way because that's one way that we help grow, not just taking my alerts and not thinking about it or doing it. You know, you want to get to the point where you're putting your own methodologies in it as well. But thanks a lot, Yummy and Jimmy, Yummy. Same thing. I, I call people by Discord names or I call people by their real names sometimes. And it's, <laughs> hard, it's hard to remember what people's actual names are at times. So all right, th thanks a lot. You did great. Hey, no problem, Lance. Thanks for letting me do it. Um, have a good night, everybody. I'm going to end it.